Medical Matters looks at foot problems. Tonight at 11. Lone Star JR is brought to you by the Waffle House Family Restaurants, by your four Indianapolis Chrysler Plymouth dealers, by Hardee's, we're out to win you over, and by True Value Hardware Stores. say it like you're proud of it. <laughs> well, I am proud of it. You know, that, uh, mm -hmm. and that was the, that moniker came to me from a sponsor, a racing sponsor, mm -hmm. High Gain CB Radios, back in 1976. The helmet? A lot of people don't realize that uh, when you take my helmet and turn it up on edge and look at it straight at the top, it's the Texas flag, the Lone Star flag, because it has the one star. And a lot of people say, hey, the star is crooked. Well, no, when you look at it like the flag, it's straight with the flag. It's right. But when you turn it up front ways and, and look head on, it's crooked. Uh, but that's what it is, is the Texas flag. It has the red panel and the white panel and the blue field in the front with the, the lone star. To my way of thinking, you and your wife, Betty, are Championship Auto Racing's finest ambassadors. How did you meet Betty? Well, we... We met Tom here at the, uh, we met at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and uh, in my rookie year, 1963, uh, Betty is a registered nurse and worked here during her, her off days at, at the hospital. She was an operating room nurse. She came out to the track on a day off and was standing at the fence when they pushed my car out to start the final phase of my driver's test. Uh, I leaned over to put my helmet in the seat and looked up and she was standing there and I winked at her because she was a cute gal and she winked back and then it was time to move the car back and go down and start the driver's test. Well, I, uh, she likes to think it was because of my, my uh, eye contact with her that I went out in the second lap of my uh, final phase of my driver's test, I spun in turn one. <laughs> well, I I, uh, I know I know what happened, and, and I spun the car. And, and fortunate for me, I didn't hit the wall, but I did spin and stop. And so I started back through Gasoline Alley. And uh, at that time, the, the room that's now the Goodyear room was the first aid station. Well, Betty was standing outside the door talking to her friends who were working that day. And I walked by and I said, uh, haven't I seen you someplace before? <laughs> Famous line. Oh and uh, we talked a little bit and I asked her if she, what she was doing that evening. And she said, well, she had plans. And I said, well, how about tomorrow evening? And she said, well, uh, sure, you know, I, maybe we'll, I'll see you maybe tomorrow. And, you know, da, 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 da. So it went on and I forgot about it and I did see her the next day and I you know, said how about this evening and so we had a date mm -hmm. two months later we were married mm -hmm. romance born at the speedway yes they're coming to Indianapolis in record numbers hundreds of special ordered Chrysler and Plymouth cars and your four Indianapolis Chrysler Plymouth dealers have got to sell them now as they celebrate LeBaron being named pace car of this year's 500. Make your best deal on over 1,000 cars in stock including Voyagers, LeBarons, New Yorkers, Horizons, Reliance and more. All come with Chrysler's 770 protection plan. Drive home a winner now from one of your four Indianapolis Chrysler Plymouth dealers. 
and welcome to the greatest spectacle in chicken. This May, Key Waffle House introduces its new stable of thrilling entries, chickens at speed. No matter when you want them, 24 hours a day. You know, folks, there's truly nothing hotter in May than Waffle House chicken. And you and your beautiful family need to know that all 150 items on the Waffle House menu arrive one way. Bam! Which came first? It's the chicken and the egg at Waffle House. Try our new marinated chicken, now at Waffle House. Spring is the time when colors bloom and savings unfold inside the new spring catalog from True Value Hardware Stores. Prune limbs with this Poland 14-inch gas chainsaw, just $129.99. It has a guide bar and cushion grip. Then turn small branches into mulch with this Black & Decker Garden Shredder, only $149.88. And this Rhino wheelbarrow with tough poly tray from True Temper is just $34.95, less a $5 mail-in rebate. Look for it in the new spring catalog from participating True Value Hardware Stores. Johnny, you're now fourth among the all-time money winners. Over three and a half million dollars. Do you remember how much you earned in the United States Auto Club competition your first year, 1962? Yeah. Well, <laughs> fortunately, your, your mind has a way of blocking out things you don't want to remember, but I it was not you. very much. $2,225. 2225 mm -hmm. Well, it, obviously then it was all the money in the world to me, and mm -hmm. I... Uh, uh, you think about those days, but uh, you also remember the good times that were that were related to those days. And I, I wouldn't take a million for the way I've come up and the way I've gotten into the big time, and and for the things that have happened to me and the friends I've made and all of the the good times. I hope you include the uh, good times we used to have on Channel Six Trackside. I remember what I paid you for an entire month's work. $500. <laughs> Cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were a little overpriced. Yeah. I've been real proud of you. Though. Well, thank you. <laughs> 23 Indianapolis starts coming up in 87. Now let's go back to another race that you missed. When was that? In 1966. April the 3rd, 1966 to be exact. It was Johnny Rutherford Day at Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. Uh, I had, was the reigning national sprint car champion. Yes. This was 1965. I had won the national title. 1966, carrying the big number one on the tail of that sprinter, I was very proud. Uh, we went to Eldora for the second race of the season. Uh, in the feature race, uh, Mario Andretti was my teammate driving the car that I had won the national championship in. <coughs> Eldora is notorious in the spring, or was, for rocks. And they used to take a potato picker and go around oh, Eldora gosh. Speedway and get rocks out of it. And it was, it you used to have rocks as big as your fist yeah. come up through the surface in the spring. Well, Mario either picked up a, a rock or a large clod of dirt. He was directly in front of me and hit me square between the eyes. Well, he hit me between the eyes with something that gained my undivided attention. I lost control of the car. The, the track was quite rough that day. I hooked a rut. The car flipped on the racetrack or rolled over uh, one time, hit the guardrail, and sailed. I've got pictures, uh, well, they've made Life Magazine, a full page in Life Magazine of the car, 20 feet in the air over the guardrail, going out of the racetrack. When it landed, I had two broken arms and a severe concussion. Uh, I laid in the hospital for a month, uh, had some complications with my right arm, wound up having nine major operations, surgeries on that arm, and uh, to save it. Uh, Today, it's, it won't straighten out, and it won't turn palm up or palm down, but it's still mine. Mm -hmm. And I just move the steering wheel back a little closer and, and go racing. <laughs> Johnny, I often use you as a study in perseverance. Ten starts at Indianapolis before you ever finish in the top ten. <laughs> now, that's sticking with it. Well, I suppose so. <laughs> uh, I, <clears throat> I'd always had the philosophy that if I could ever find a team that wanted to go racing as badly as I did, I'd be a winner. 
And of course, in 1973, I joined forces and was hired to drive for Team McLaren, <coughs> an English-based team uh, that had come to Indianapolis a couple of years previous and, uh, and started making their mark. And, and they were the catalyst for JR success and, and what I was able to obtain in racing for the next few years. Is that the year you sat on the pole? Yes, in 73 I sat on the pole and we won a race our first year together, which was, which was great, you know, it meant, a, it meant a lot for us and it, and it spelled the future, I think. In, in 1974, uh, I won my first Indy 500 and that's the first time I finished the race. I mean, really you can't uh, judge a race driver on the basis of his Indianapolis record alone. Um, a couple of them come to mind, uh, Rex Mays, Tony Bettenhaus, and national champions that never won it in me. Yes, and it's, it is funny. Well, you know, you, you just, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no set formula. Uh, it's like Chuck Yeager says, it's being in the right place at the right time. And of course, my being hired by Team McLaren to drive for them, and uh, we, have, we had success our initial year together, and then, of course, we won Indy in the next year, in 1974. We finished second the next year uh, here, uh, just missing victory, I think, because of the rain at the end of the race. We won in 76 the next year, which was a rain shortened. It was the shortest I race in history, I guess. But that, that was the, the thing that I needed, was somebody that was true professional. McLaren, that was their only business. They were in business to race. He had a little bit of showmanship uh, in that victory in 1980, coming around giving uh, fellow driver Tim Richmond the ride on your race car. And all. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was one of those I think things. every cameraman in the world took a picture of you that day. Well, and, and that was, you know, I, I still regret that, that Tim has gone on to other, and he's doing quite well in other yes. type of racing and, and stock cars, but I always regretted that he didn't, he wasn't able to, to put it together to stay here at Indianapolis and become a speedway driver here <coughs> because someday, if he ever won, I'd like to say I gave that kid his first ride to Victory Lane. Experience the most luscious sunrise in the world. Hardy's Canadian Sunrise Biscuit. Real Canadian bacon, cheese, farm fresh egg, and hickory smoked bacon on Hardy's made from scratch Rise and Shine Biscuit. For a taste so special, it'll brighten your whole day. Hardy's, we're out to win you over. Randy Woods is an employee relations specialist at Indianapolis Power and Light. There's a lot of technology involved in providing your electric service, but we still depend on people. That's why we go out of our way to employ the most qualified people. And then we continually provide training and career counseling. Maintaining high productivity is one way we're able to assure you of the most dependable electric service at the lowest possible cost. Tequita. Tequita wine cooler. It's bad. Johnny, you've had your share of accidents both in the sprints and in the championship cars, but that Eddie Sachs crash, that was different, wasn't it? Uh, that was about as close as I've, I've been because it was one of those chain reaction accidents that you get caught up in. And, uh, and it's, it's really funny that I can still remember that today as vividly as if it had happened yesterday. Uh, uh, we were running in the race. I started, I think, outside in the, in the fifth row. 
and Eddie started behind me, middle of the next row or, or in the vicinity. <coughs> the green flag dropped, and of course there was the usual flurry into the first turn, and Eddie got by me, and I thought, hey, there goes Saxy. I'll just jump on Eddie's tail. He always goes to the front, and if I can hang on to Eddie, I'll be in good shape. And we, we came through the, the, the fourth turn, are actually entering the fourth turn across the short chute. Uh, everything was, was in good shape. And I s remember there was a, a, cl a cloud of dust. And suddenly this red car flashed sideways and slammed into that angled retaining wall toward uh, the pit entrance. It was a huge fireball. And as we approached it, I really got on my brakes hard, and very, very hard, and my car was, was slowing down, but not really very quickly, and I was still maintaining my distance on, on Eddie. And, and it was like Dave McDonald's car, when it hit the wall and exploded high into the air, it was like an orange and black curtain, the flame and black billowy smoke being pulled across the racetrack. At, at the last instant, Eddie turned left and hit McDonald dead broadside. Well, of course, this, this slowed, checked his forward progress, and, and he was stopping, and the back of his car reared up in the air, and I went under mm. because my roadster had Eddie's right rear tire mark up the nose of the car. Uh, the, it, must have, it must have gone higher because it or booted him higher because I went under. Then I went on top of McDonald's car, went over his left rear tire. I left tire marks. I went down the next day and looked at all of the marks and everything. I left tire marks on top of the, the cement wall in turn four. My car fell down off of the wall on the track, thank goodness. Back onto the track. Uh, the impact had, had flung me forward against the shoulder harnesses. Uh, and I was thrown looking down, and the raining, burning fuel in the air had come in. I reached down and unlocked the transmission because we had a, a lock to lock it in high gear. Shifted it, downshifted into second gear, and started trying to pick up speed to blow the flames out. About that time, after I got all of this done, here comes Bobby Unser, who had blasted through in the four-wheel drive no by with his steering knocked out. He is sideways, I catch him out of my peripheral vision, look over just as he nails me broadside. And I pulled into the infield in turn three and drove it on down around, mm -hmm. back up to the racetrack and across, and then they, of course, we were, the fourth turn was blocked, pulled up to a stop, and uh, that's when I got out and looked around the car and saw it dripping fuel, and of course, they immediately had a lot of people there. But it was, uh, I, I don't know why that did, I guess because of the nature of it, it's just so vivid and, and uh, was something that this was stamped there. And I can still remember those things, yeah. like I said, just like they were yesterday. You're proud of your Texas heritage, aren't you? Yes. And uh, being from Kansas, that's not, <laughs> that's not a bad deal. I was born in Coffeyville, Kansas, and raised in Texas. And so I really... I really feel Texan. I, all, all my family's from Texas, my mother, uh, my dad, and so it's, uh, uh, we, you know, everybody kind of moved to Texas and, and grew up there. Not too far from fellow competitor A.J. Foyt. <laughs> and he's another Texan, true Texan. True isn't he? Texan, you better believe it. Uh, we're all proud of A.J. Uh, in fact, he's my hero, I guess uh, you could say. He's, uh, he's probably the greatest race driver, in my estimation, to ever strap on a race car. And I know there are a lot of people that would, that would uh, uh, differ with me on that, but I really think that there, during Foyt's prime, there's nobody I've ever seen or no, you know, there's just not anyone that can uh, compete with him. My goal one of my goals is to just be a part of that uh, heritage from texas and and be the second four-time winner and that would be uh, eight victories for texas <laughs> uh, despite the pressures of big time racing and the demands it makes on family you and betty have hung together you have two wonderful children and by golly all race fans are, are real proud of the rutherford family unit 
Well, it's, uh, I'm, I've been blessed uh, because Betty is, is the rock of, uh, of the Rutherford clan and she, she holds it all together and she's uh, done a, a great deal for myself and of course the, uh, my son and daughter. And uh, it's one of those things where, where I feel like I just could not have done it without her at this point. She's, uh, she's been great and I'm, uh, you know, this is 24 years uh, we've been together. The Budding family has been making delicious thin sliced Budding meats for generations. Budding was there in the 50s. Honey, these will go great with our game of canasta. The 60s. The 70s. I hope you like alfalfa sprouts on your sandwich. Even today, Budding meats are made the way they've always been by the Budding family. Over the years, a lot has changed, but one thing hasn't. The great taste of lean Budding meats. Indy fans, get your engine started with milk. Milk, Indiana's favorite health care. I'm Oprah Winfrey. Join me weekday afternoons at 4 on WRTV6. We'll have interesting guests, controversial topics. You can count on us for the best hour of talk in the afternoon. Promise, each weekday at 4 on The Oprah Winfrey Show. Rutherford and Capos. Rutherford, almost a quarter of a century at the Speedway. Capos, going on 20 years. Ah, what experience. What stories you must tell. <laughs> Plenty of stories, Tom. Just, uh, in fact, with Johnny in the short time he's been with us, his third year coming up this year, uh, he's probably contributed to more stories than uh, the Mario and Al Sr. and, and uh, Joe Leonard did with, in my career as being a mechanic at Indianapolis. But... Uh, They've all been good, and, and uh, John has uh, come through it smiling every time, and we're thankful about that. Sometimes we get into a little trouble on a racetrack and it doesn't look too good, but John steps out of it groggy and shakes it off just like he's been doing all these years in racing. Very fortunate. Pocono brings back memories, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, last year at Pocono, uh, we led the first uh, 26, 27 laps, and we uh, came into the pits, and Mario was running second to us, and we left the pits, and Mario had a little better exit out of the pits, so we were running second to him, and uh, uh, after that first pit stop at the Pocono 500 last year, and uh, all of a sudden, the yellow came out, and I called John, and, and I said, John, we've got a yellow. How serious is it? And nothing. And I said, John, how serious is it? He says, it's me, goddammit. <laughs> He said, I've crashed. I've crashed bad. I said, what shape are you in? He says, tell Betty I'm okay. I'm getting out of the tub. He says, there's nothing left of the car. And uh, I said, oh, boy, I'll, I'll tell Betty. Uh, and uh, I said, Betty, he's all right. He's had a pretty bad crash back in the tunnel turn. But he's talking on the radio, so we're thankful that the only thing left in the race car was where he was sitting and the radio. And... Uh, this one didn't knock him senseless or, yeah. or dizzy. It, I mean, he was all right. Been a, few, been a few times he's been knocked senseless, hasn't it? Well, the year before at Pocono again, we were uh, leading the race. We had made the uh, sixth pit stop, and we were leading Al Unser Jr. handily by four seconds. And uh, we crashed down in turn one, and he didn't respond to the radio on that one because Dr. Olvey and Dr. Trammell were trying to revive him. He was unconscious, but he was all right from that one. He just had been knocked unconscious. So anyhow, John has a way of reporting into us uh, what, what shape he's in if he's involved in an accident. And also, like at Mid-Ohio last year, he had a way of reporting in the condition of other drivers, like that Jose Lee accident. That, that was uh, a bad accident. That was a tremendously bad accident in complete view of everybody in the pits, and we're under a long, prolonged, paced yellow, 
and each time John goes by on the yellow, he's given me a condition of the driver and the condition of the race car and what a horrendous crash it was. And I finally got on the radio and I said, John, we're not paying you to report on the accidents out on the racetrack. Just drive that race car and stay where you're at. You got eight laps to go and it looks like it may finish under the yellow because of the extent of it. So after that, he didn't report in anymore. John Caples is, is from my school. Yeah, he's a he's a Albuquerque uh, racer, you know. He's from Unserville, and uh, Caples is is came back here to be a driver. Uh, drove sprint cars, won a feature race at uh, Hamburg, New York, or somewhere back east, uh, and decided then that he would rather be on the mechanical side of things. And John is the old school, and he believes in the old ideas in the way you do it. Uh, I'm blessed with Caples because he's the kind of guy that when he sends a race car out on the track to race, it's ready to go the distance. And uh, that in my book means a great deal because to finish first, you must first finish. Number four, another victory at Indy. That's quite a goal. You picked up another 500 victory just a year ago at Michigan, so it's obviously in the cards, isn't it? Could be. I, I really feel good. Mm -hmm. really feel good about this season. We have our sponsor, Vermont American, behind us, uh, the, uh, giving us the, the opportunities uh, with the new March car. Everything uh, has been excellent to this point. I'm really, I'm really pumped up about this season because it's, it's one of those things that you get that feeling every now and then, and I've had it a few times in my career. And this is one of them. And I, I, it's hard to explain, but it's just there, and I feel good about it. There are winners, and there are champions. I like champion for Rutherford. He's earned his victories, his world acclaim. Tasted tragedy on the short tracks. Adapted to the road courses. Won the big one, not once, but three times. Friendly, yet competitive. Smiling, but determined. Number four for Lone Star JR? Yes, of course. He could come now, May 1987. Three laps complete for JR in this qualification attempt. Three laps complete. Starting on lap four, just on the line in turn one that time. Well, dropping down quite a bit, lap number three. 206.873 miles an hour. The time, 43.505. We've got a speed average right now of 208.210 miles an hour. Let's await the decision here. John? He's through turn number three, Tom, on the short shoot. Now through turn number four. Here comes JR. Off of four, onto the main straightaway. And he's going to take it all. The checkered flag for Johnny Rutherford. Lone Star JR was brought to you by